Greetings and salutations, second star right back with more Rage Shadow Legends, and today, patch 1.14 has dropped, bringing with it a slew of quality of life improvements, just as they say in the news update. There's some stuff that disappoints me a bit, but uh, we won't dwell on that immediately. We will go into the stuff that is more awesome, and that more awesome stuff is, first and foremost, the artifact filter. Um, uh, you can now filter by all these different things, and you know what? Let's not talk about it. Let's go in and do it. Okay, so if you're an artifact hoarder like myself, uh, you will find this uh, very refreshing. Okay, so go into your artifact search as you ordinarily would. There's a new button here called Filter. It brings up this submenu called Artifact Type. And let's say you want to find some speed boots, okay? Uh, you click on the boot icon. All right, look for the speed as your primary stat. See how that's highlighted? Now, all of your stuff that's in your inventory, um, in your vault, is going to be selected here. Uh, you can also see who's wearing what by hitting equipped and that'll bring up everyone wearing speed boots. Uh, you can also by leaving this highlighted the speed still checked you can see what's like speed and crit so you hit the substats menu hit crit rate and now you will see all of your uh, speed boots with crit rate substats and who is wearing them. Alright so that is pretty sweet. Okay, now let's unselect all of our filters. And we can search via other methods. Okay, sorry, my system is a bit slow. It's very tired and very old. Alright, so uncheck the boots. Come on. Unselect. You can do it. You can do it. Yeah, that's there you go. So now here we have a view of everything uh, in our inventory and stuff that is equipped as well. All right, let's see if this works. This is a bit hard on my system, but let's see if we can find who's wearing uh, my frenzy set. I always lose my frenzy set. I can never find it, but here we go. Um, we see that Molly is wearing it. I don't know why. I put a, a frenzy set on Molly for some reason, uh, but then like a squirrel with a fluffy tail ran by and I got distracted. I have no idea what I was trying to do uh, with this, but I will investigate that further and get back to it and I don't know what I was doing. But anyway, uh, the power of the artifact filter is awesome. I love it. I am so relieved, and, and I, it's like a, a weight has lifted off me because I had such a hard time, you know, doing all this math to find, you know, the ideal set, and now it's gonna be so much easier to find these things. Um, I'm just, I'm super happy. Good job, Clarium. A well-deserved pat on the back for the artifact sorting system. I am happy, happy camper. All right, but let's continue on, shall we? Okay, so what else do we have here in news? We have uh, increased maximum collection size. Uh, the chain collection goes up to 200 now. You will notice, however, um, when you go down uh, to actually do that, um, this is probably something that, that everyone expected when they heard the news. Go down to the bottom of your champion collection. Uh, and yeah, so it's gonna be a incrementing by 10 slots and it's going to cost you so yes they did increase it by by a hundred but you know it's not a it's not a free thing for you by any means but you know that's okay we'll roll with that additionally uh clan boss changes uh after turn 50 uh there's no the revive skill doesn't work anymore so that kind of puts a kibosh on uh that clan boss team composition Add a turn counter, damage counter to clan boss interface, uh, which is super helpful. It's also, it's, I, I watched it this morning when I did. It was, it was, it was cool to see. <coughs> Excuse me. I have allergies. I do not have coronavirus. Um, I live in a state that has uh, an extra season, and this season is called the pollening, and everything is coated with this fine yellow dust, and it wreaks havoc upon my, uh, my sinuses, so, so bear with me in that regard. Uh, there's also a platinum tier bat battle limit, which... I don't know anything about because I I don't focus on my arena but I, it does make sense that you can't just use a single opponent as a punching bag uh, continuously throughout the day so I guess for people in platinum uh, this is probably good for the people that are on the receiving end of someone uh, giving them a constant beat down so good on them for that I guess we'll see how it actually pans out uh, well let me rephrase that other people will see how that pans out, and I'll just, you know, watch on from the, from a distance in the peanut gallery. <coughs> Excuse me again. Early game reward changes. Increase the amount of silver given for completing the first seven progress missions, which is awesome, because uh, 
you really want, want to get into upgrading your artifacts and stuff there's just an excitement about that and with the limited uh, silver that you got initially it was a little bit difficult so um, that will be nice for the new players faction wars rebalance uh, <laughs> I actually hadn't been doing a whole lot of faction wars either and I didn't realize uh, that it had gotten uh, so much better to play like, like when it first came out I tried to push as hard as I could and just got beat down <laughs> because it was so difficult the difficulty ramped up so quickly in Faction Wars I did not realize until recently I had a commenter saying you know Faction Wars isn't that hard I'm like well, yeah, I always thought it was so I went in there and I'm like oh okay <laughs> I guess I don't know what I'm talking about and it, it was a lot easier and I guess now they've made it easier again so that's good and it's good to have more people participate um, in Faction Wars because it is an area of the game that I think is neat I like you know finding uh, synergies within a faction because it's much more difficult uh, so that's just an aspect of the game that I like and it'd be cool to be expanded upon now that you can experience it without utter failure over and over again okay and now this is the thing that bums me out the most the Relentless Artifact Set Rebalance Relentless artifacts no longer grant multiple extra turns at the same time if the wearer also got an extra turn through other means, like through their own skills or the skills of their allies. So we're talking Whisper, right? Which, uh, when they have a weakened and a defense down, they get an extra turn. This is ridiculous. I hate this so much. First of all, the Relentless Artifact set wasn't great. Now, they always use it as like their top-tier rewards for their events. Um, it is a good set to have, but... The, the main key for this was to give it to a champion that already has extra turn capability. That's what made it awesome, right? So, and, and I don't know, I don't know why they did this. I, I genuinely don't get it. They've kind of lessened the value of their top tier rewards for just because a few champions could benefit extra from it. And that just seems ridiculous. What they've done is they've taken the occasional bit of awesomeness, right? Like when Robar or, uh, or, or Whisper, you know, has eight attacks against the boss and takes it down, like, at the very end or, or something. It's just, it's occasionally, it's amazing, right? And this isn't a game that has occasional amazing in it. Most of it is calculated, you know? You're, you're working things out ahead of time, and you have kind of predictable results uh, for the most part. You know, you know who's going to go when, what they're going to do, what skills are going to do. You, you plan that all out, that, you know, when you're fighting on auto anyway. So there isn't a whole lot of room for for random awesome, right? The relentless set with someone who had an extra turn provided that. Occasionally you take down like a, a boss all by themselves, you know, uh, at a certain point. And it happens rarely, but when it does, it's just, you almost stand up and cheer sometimes. I mean, I like, got so excited when that happened. And now they've kind of nixed that, and it's just, that, that's unnecessary they've they've replaced random awesomeness you know occasional awesomeness with inconsistent mediocrity and that is not a good trade-off for anybody that is a huge mistake i think they i don't think this was ruining the game anyway it just made it every once in a while something really cool happened right and, and i don't know why you would take that out that's a, that's a huge mistake and so boo on that bad bad job plarium that is that is Yes, I'll bring you your coffee, and you'll have three creams, three sugars, and three spoons of Drano. All right, so champion rebalances and fixes. Um, the Duchess of Litsu, I don't think it's that, that much of a nerf. Um, it's just that, that initial AoE uh, goes down from from 40% to, like, 25%. Uh, so I still don't know. I used to always... I had to take out my Skull Crown a lot of times when I was fighting a Litsu team and put them in with Whisper, which I guess won't, that won't work anymore either. Oh well, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but we'll we'll see how that plans out. I, I actually, to be completely honest, I avoided Duchess teams as often as I could because I just couldn't stand, could not stand fighting that. I, I couldn't kill her. I just, I couldn't I couldn't muster up just with my gear level and and whatever. I just didn't have. It was hard to take her out. Once you take her out, usually the fight's easy, but I just never got to that point. It, very rarely. Um, so I'm good to see it changed, but we'll see how it actually works out in practice. Okay, Laird of Tramfort, he really needed a buff because uh, Stagnite was kind of stealing his thunder a little bit. You know, they look so similar, and uh, he, Stagnite just kind of had better skill set. So it'll be good to see a little bit of a change here. I, I don't want to get into everything. This, will, this video will take forever, but 
Uh, maybe someone's listening and not reading it, reading along. So in, in that case, his skill one, Annihilation, uh, now has a 45% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns, which was an extra 15% of inflicting a critical hit. So it does change that completely from uh, increased crit critical hit chance to 60% decreased defense for two turns, which I think is much better. That is a much better skill. And then Earthshaker, the damage now depends on hit points, which was attack, which makes perfect sense since he's a hit point based champion. Uh, I don't know what that skill was all about uh, originally, so that works out. And his Thorn Sphere passive uh, makes a shield, and uh, now that shield is 20% of the max hit points instead of 10%, and now has a 100% chance to place a 15% decreased speed debuff for one turn on uh, whichever enemy attacks the champion. It used to be it was only on the champion that destroyed his shield, so that is a huge improvement also. Now, <laughs> Mashalid. Mashalid, this is, this is crazy. Actually, I'm going to get out of this, and we're just going to go into Mashalid right now, because they made like kind of a, oh, hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, you did awesome on your connects. But I'm recording right now, okay? So we'll talk about connects in a little bit, all right? All right, buddy. Okay, so let's go into Mishalad. Oh, I don't have Mishalad. Let's go in the index. Okay. Um, they, they made like a Dracomorph-esque improvement to Mishalad. He is actually pretty sweet now. Um, all right, so let's look at this guy. Uh, first of all, just thematically, the changes are great. You know, this, this you know, desiccated vampire champion... Um, attacks one enemy and heals the champion by 30% of the damage inflicted. Uh, and then will attack all enemies that are under leech debuffs. So this is awesome. Okay, so it makes sense. He's a vampire. He should definitely heal when they attack. I think they all should. I just think that thematically it makes sense. But to have um, an AoE uh, on anyone who leeches is uh, with leech on him is also really cool too because he puts a leech on his A2. All right, his A2 uh, places a 30% increased speed and a 30% increased crit damage buff on all allies for two turns, which is awesome. And then places True Fear and Leech on all enemies for two turns. That's that's insane. Absolutely insane. I love it. I love it. And it just has one book to get down to a three-turn cooldown. Oh, see those old champions when before they went book crazy. It's so great. Okay, Open Wounds is A3. Fortune cooldown that you can get down to three turns. Attacks one enemy has an 80% chance of stealing all buffs from the target before attacking. Places 100% heal reduction to buff for two turns. Also places two 15% continuous heal buffs on a champion for three turns. <coughs> Excuse me. Damage increases by 50% against targets that have no buffs. Mashalad is awesome. I can I can definitely see, you know, a couple of months from now they have like a player and puts gives like a 10 times chance to get. <laughs> Mashalid from Ancient and Sacred Shards and everyone goes hog wild like Jacob Morph and, and like I open up 300 Ancient Shards and I don't get a Mashalid and I complain to Plarium that, I, that I'm going to quit if I didn't get Mashalid and then they say no because they've learned the lesson and then life goes on as normal and everything's fine so that that's my prediction okay so uh, Mashalid excellent 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 upgrade for Mashalid I'm super pleased for everyone who had vaulted that champion and is now <laughs> able to dig them out, taking the 60 and wreak havoc uh, upon bosses everywhere. I, I, I love it. I love it. Michelle, it's awesome now. Alright, Mortu Macabre has also been uh, changed. His skill 2 has, has gone to now each hit has a 90% chance of placing a block buff to buff for 2 turns, which was a 50% chance. Also now, the block buffs to buff cannot be resisted if a target is under heal reduction. Skill 3, Fiery Rage. The effect chance has been increased from 20% to 20%, uh, from 10%, uh, to unlock Peril. And Peril is his skill that lets you attack, uh, that increases, that, that uh, uh, ignores block damage, ignores shield, and ignores defense. So it's like basically hitting, a, hitting your naked champion. Um, yeah, Morton Macabre has gotten a nice buff too. Oathbound, I'm not so sure about. They did not change Oath Amount's A1 at all. His A2, however, uh, is Subjugate. The new version attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance of placing a 25% decrease attack buff debuff on all enemies for two turns. Also, has a 55% chance of decreasing each target's turn meter by 20%, uh, which was 50, and this is a 50% decrease attack buff in the Ascended version. Um, now, there is a if you look at his skill, though, it's still based on... Um, attack and defense it says it scales with defense 
but then also has attack rate on it, so I don't know if that is vestigial or not, but um, I'm definitely going to work on my Oathbound. Um, I had visions of putting like Oathbound and like Vode Painted in the same team, just having like this constant. Um, two horrible champions but that constantly lock out everyone's cooldown skills, which is really kind of funny, you know? <laughs> I, don't know. I was tickled pink by the thought of it. Okay, so in skill 3, uh, the chance of the block cooldown skills to buff increased to 100% if the target is under decreased attack to buff. Um, now, there is issues with that too, but when I actually go over Oathbound, um, we'll go over that. It's, it's the books. The, it, his, his, his skill 3 still requires books, even though if his A2 was fully skilled up, the books are worthless. It's, it's weird. Uh, Ricked off the bold, got a nice, nice bump too. His Runation decreases each target's max hit points by 30% of the damage inflicted, which was 10%, so that is a nice, nice bump. His Bloodletting skill, the effect changes in the Ascended version. Now each hit places a 5% poison buff on all enemies for two turns, which was the, used to be only the target enemy. It used to be that that couldn't be removed, um, and now it can be removed, but it's on everybody, so who cares? Skill 3 is his Curse Hold. It's completely different. New version attacks one enemy. Critical damage increases by 20% for each poison debuff on the target. Stacks up to 100%. Makes much more sense than what it used to be, which was a copy random buff and then places on all other, all other enemies. Uh, this is uh, much more useful to have when he's, he's poisoning and then and then uh, increases crit damage for each poison debuff. is much more synergistic. Virgis also has a little bit of buff. Uh, his skill 2 uh, has an added effect. And now also places an ally protection buff on all, all, all allies, as well as 60% increased defense buff on this champion for two turns. So he has a little bit of a jerig uh, in him now. And his skill 3, second wind, is a passive. Uh, the new effect is now places a shield buff on this champion equal to 10% of their max hit points whenever the champion loses 10% or more of their max hit points from a single hit. And it was already did a heal, so that's a nice buff for Virgis. Um, Stu said he was already working on Lord Chamfort and Virgis, uh, uh, bringing them up to 60 and seeing how they perform, so be on the lookout for that. Um, one of my uh, subs asked me to do a Virgis, and I may do that too, which depends on um, what Stu does, if I have anything to add. Warchief, uh, his skill to Marauder, cooldown decreased from 5 turns to 4, which is nice, and the Ascended version now has a 100% chance to steal 2 random buffs from the target, which was 75% chance, so that's an awesome uh, increase of 25%. And his passive standstill, uh, now the defense increases by 15% for each dead ally, and it was by 10%, so that is a nice boost as well. Uh, Lord Chamfer, they changed his, um, <laughs> his uh, Carrot Castle skills to make it easier uh, on... on uh, Poor champions that are going through, which is nice, nice of them. Okay, now they've also changed fear and true fear. Um, this wall of text that's here on the screen, what it, uh, what it's saying really is just that they're treating it like a freeze or a stun, uh, which is basically what it is. And, and, and yeah, I understand that there's like only fifty percent chance of it to take effect, but um, it also generally lasts longer than than uh, stuns and freezes do. So there's a trade-off there. So basically they're just changing the masteries and whatever so that uh, fear and true fear are not extended by the lower versions like Master Sni like Sniper and um, Master Hexer and they moved it over to uh, the higher tier skill where, where when you can extend stun and fear now, oh, sorry, sorry, stun and freeze now fear and true fear fall in that category, which I guess I guess makes sense. They've added some visualization for passive skills, which is kind of neat. You see like a little icon when when uh, a passive skill uh, triggers. So now everyone who's using their stout axemen and it will now be able to see when their passive triggers. So I guess that's fine. Okay, um, fusion interface now includes chambers in your vault, which is nice. Chambers with AoE skills that deal damage will now use those skills against the ice golem and his minions on auto. Praise the Lord! I'm waiting. We've all been waiting for that for a long time. I can't wait to see that uh, in action. Uh, they changed the inbox UI. It's a little smaller, so you can see more at once, which is kind of cool. Uh, the event points daily limit will display the main events interface. Okay, that's fine. Improved battle pass indicator mechanics. Uh, I haven't noticed that personally, but um, that's good. Fixed a bug that results in changing language in tournaments. I can see how that would be useful. Fixed a bug that prevented Septimus's passive skill from increasing the duration of poison debuffs on the clan boss. Fantastic. Septimus is uh, is legendary once again in clan boss. Uh, that's That's fantastic. 
other minor fixtures and improvements. What I can say they have not fixed is they still have not fixed Crimson Slayers A2. Uh, I ran through Fire Knight a bunch of times to see, like, every time they make an update, I take her into Fire Knight to see if she's going to use her turn meter reduction skill, and she's still not doing it. I don't know what the holdup is, but it's driving me crazy. <sighs> anyway, there's a lot of good stuff in this update. Uh, I'm excited. The artifact sorting is fantastic. The, uh, the skill cha changes to champions, for the most part, is, is awesomely conceived. I really like it. They've, they've taken some champions that were worthless and made them amazing, just like they did the Drake and Morph a while ago. So I'm excited to see all that. The Relentless Artifact change was stupid and unnecessary, and I'm livid about that. Um, it makes Whisper just kind of okay. She was my favorite champion, and now, you know, you can you can see it. You, you see the decrease in, in damage output. There's much less awesome. Now, it still happens occasionally, you know, depending on the timing. Like, if she, if um, Relentless triggers before her skill triggers, you know, the extra turn, then then sometimes it's okay, but it's still not, it's not the same. You don't see attacks over and over and over, and that's lame. Because it didn't happen very often, and when it did, it was exciting. And now they've just taken some excitement out, which is unnecessary. And uh, that just, I'm disappointed. Um... I use him on Chevalier also. I think Chevalier is going to be okay though because his A1 says that it, it duplicates the attack. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't look like it's taking extra turns. So maybe uh, Lord Champ, for, I'm sorry, um, Chevalier will be all right. But we'll see. That will require some more testing. But all in all, all in all, I'm pleased. Um, there is some downside, but there's a lot more good than stuff I don't like. So I'm uh, pretty pleased with this patch. Uh, let me know in your comments below what you think about it, um, what you wish they'd added, what they can add next time, what you're still looking for, what have you. If you enjoyed yourself, throw me a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I got stuff coming down this week that should be interesting. And uh, I want to try out some of these uh, new skills on champions that I have stuck in my vault. All right, guys, uh, I appreciate your watching. Uh, and I will see you next time. Everyone out there, stay safe. Bye.